Hello, my name is Rodney and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to look at all the factors that go into creating a Milky Way image like this uh, Milky Way image at Joshua Tree National Park. We're uh, going to look at the process from behind the scenes, uh, the original image after post-production or the final image, and uh, that's what we're going to do in the next uh, 15 minutes or so here. Before we go any farther, I want to uh, shout out something here. This is a thank you to Jade. Jade's a former student of mine who uh, pushed me to start doing YouTube and vlogging. So Jade, thank you so much. And um, she told me to start vlogging my tours. Also, a thank you to Sharon and Georgette who uh, hung out with me this week while we were in California and checking out uh, these beautiful places. So thank you, Jade, Sharon, and Georgette. All right, so prep. Um, a master of any craft is gonna tell you that the most important step of any project is prep. Prep, 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 prep. And so here's what you need to know about this shoot. Um, first of all, know where you're going. Um, this is one of those places where we got there during the day, but it was still light out, we set up, we we're ready to go, awesome. Um, a lot of people got there at night when it was dark, had never been there, didn't know where to set up, and uh, it was just kind of a mess. So know where you're going, um, know when you need to be there, know when the best light's going to be, um, know what the sky's going to be like. So things like clouds. Clouds mean no Milky Way. Um, also know what the moon's going to be like. Uh, you want to make sure the moon is not up because the moon will just overpower your Milky Way and make it not happen. So um, know what that stuff is. There's an app out there called Photo Pills. Um, I highly recommend it. If you haven't got it and you wanted to be doing night photography, Milky Way photography, get Photo Pills. It's huge. Um, so be prepared for the weather. It was hot in Palm Springs. Um, we deal with Celsius scale here, and it was like 36 degrees Celsius in Palm Springs, which is very hot, somewhere in the 100 range for you Americans. Um, when we got to uh, Joshua Tree, it was not quite as hot, but it was still warm. Um, the second the sun went down, it dropped like a rock. And so you want to be prepared. Um, even in summer, if you're leaving Palm Springs to go to Joshua Tree and you're like, oh, it's really hot, bring extra clothes because it's going to be pretty chilly by the time the Milky Way comes out typically. So we shot this at about 1.30 in the morning and it was cold. So just be aware of that. Um, be prepared. Um, camera settings. So before we get to camera settings, shoot raw. So we'll show you what a JPEG looks like. It's a JPEG. This is the same image in RAW after you've tweaked it. Um, you can tweak a JPEG, but you can't tweak it nearly the way you can tweak a RAW image. So shooting in RAW mode is important. And in the starting point, I'm at starting point. Starting point means that it's the place where you start. Not necessarily the place that you end, but it's the starting point. Starting point, ISO 3200. Um, 20 second exposure at f2.8. If you don't have an f2.8 lens, um, you have a kit lens or something with a maximum aperture of f3.5, um, then obviously your maximum aperture is 3.5, so that's what you're going to use. Um, maybe you'll end up shooting it at ISO 4000 or a little bit higher, but start starting point, starting point, ISO 3200, um, 20 seconds, f2.8. We're not going to be doing this image um, using exposure stacks. So there are post-processing techniques where you take 20, 30 images, you stack them together, and using software, um, it removes all the noise out of your image. We're not going to be doing that in this video. So we're doing a single capture, and that's how we're doing it. Um, given that, we want to keep our ISO fairly low so we don't have as much noise. So ISO 3200, good starting point. Um, check out your histogram at the back of your camera if you don't know how to use that. We'll cover that later on. The other thing is uh, we want to pre-focus. So um, if you're there when it's still light out, you pre-focus your camera on, in this case, the arch. Um, it's far enough away that you want that sharp and the Milky Way will be sharp in behind it. So focus on the arch, um, turn your lens onto manual focus, and that way when you turn to push the button and it's dark, 
your lens isn't going to go ee, 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 trying to find this the spot. So pre-focus your lens, um, and then we get to nighttime. So we're getting ready to shoot, um, shoot lots of frames, um, play around with light painting, um, which is just simply flashlight. Open the shutter for 20 seconds, pull out your flashlight, and paint the scene. Um, it's kind of a cool way to do things, and uh, you get to see a bit of a different look. Um, you can change your foreground and really make some dramatic images with that. So that's something that um, you want to have a flashlight for. And there's, we just realized that different types of flashlights will give you a different type of light. So an incandescent light will give you a warmer tone, whereas most LEDs will be a cooler tone. Um, and uh, the first time we shot this, there was a bunch of people there with red lights all over the place. Oh, it was horrible, horrible, horrible. So I'll show you a little bit about oh, what that did. Um, it just really wrecked a lot of images. So just keep shooting. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Click, 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 click. And um, make sure you're there when the Milky Way starts. All right, post-production. So um, they say that many of the old master painters used to pencil sketch on their canvas before they painted. Um, and so when we click the shutter, this is like a pencil sketch. Now we take it into post-production and we create the masterpiece. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go into uh, post-production and we're going to do that. Um, there's many ways of doing that. Some people use um, Lightroom, some people use On1. Uh, for this, I'm going to use Adobe Bridge and Camera Raw and Photoshop. Um, Camera Raw is basically the same tools as you have in Lightroom. Um, I just am not a Lightroom fan, so I don't use it. Okay, so we are in uh, Bridge right now. We're going to bring this image into Camera Raw, which is the same thing you would do in Lightroom. And uh, the first thing we're going to look at is the white balance. So right now, the white balance for the foreground is actually pretty good. So we're going to keep that. Um, but what we are going to change is the white balance for the sky. So the sky, we're not fond of that greenish kind of thing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go and we're going to paint everything that's sky. So we're going to start by just painting it all. If it's skyish, we're painting it. And Bob Ross would say we're going to take a look at the little birdies here. And we're going to make this all just a happy, happy place for that all to be. So all that sky we've now painted. And we're going to change the white balance on that. Um, we're going to start to just bring the temperature down and cool it off. So we're going to bring it into the minus 40 range. So that looks pretty nice. And the tint, we're going to bring up the magentas just a little bit as well. So that's just changing the tone of the sky, or the color of the sky right now. Um, but we're also going to change a few other things. So we're going to bring the exposure. Um, I'm going to bring the exposure up just a little bit in that whole area. Oh, looks like we missed a little bit of it here. There we go. Now we got the whole sky. Um, bring the exposure up just a bit. I think that's great. Um, contrast, we're going to bring that up as well. Let's give it a little more zip. Um, the highlights, we're going to bring that up a fair bit. Bring our shadows up just a touch. And the clarity is a, is a contrast. If you bring the clarity down, it makes it all look muddy. We're going to give it a bit of clarity as well. Uh, we don't want to go, go too far on that because it'll make it look noisy as well. But that's the first step. Um, now we're going to add a new brush. We're just going to mil do the Milky Way. So we're going to come in here and with this new brush, we're just going to come in here and just grab the, the highlights here and take that stuff off. Now, what we're not going to do, this is way too much. Um, we're going to bring this down considerably. And um, I'm going to bring this down as well. a bit there. This we're going to give 
a little bit. We don't want to go like that's way overdoing it. It's overkill. So we're bringing it down to about 20 or 30. Um, the contrast we're going to bring down a little bit as well. Um, the highlights. And we're going to go to about plus 15. The shadows we're going to bring down a bit. Clarity. Um, we're going to keep that at about 23. And the saturation on this, we can go way saturated, which just kind of makes it look awful. Um, we can desaturate it, which makes it look pretty bad as well. So we're just going to keep it right at about five to six, maybe seven, somewhere in that range. Um, so that's the sky has now been tweaked a bit, and we like that. I like that. Um, so we're going to we're going to keep it at that. Um, but what we do notice is that the rock here is a warm tone and this rock here is a really cool tone. And so we need to, to tweak that. So we are going to take and um, for this, we're going to zero everything else out because we don't need to give it a whole bunch of uh, that, but we do want to give it a bit of warmth. So we're just going to take and a brush a little bigger we make the brush uh, change the size of that by simply um, using the big bracket keys so the big brackets make it the brushes either smaller or bigger um, we're going to take and we're going to warm that section of rock up and make it look like it's brothers and sisters over there so that makes it look a lot better um, we're going to add a new piece here there's this part of the, the rock here is very bright, and this part is bright as well. And, and it tends to draw your eyes to the outside of the image instead of drawing them in here. So all we're going to do is um, we're going to take and with this new one, we're going to come into this rock here, and we're just going to take both of those areas and bring the exposure down a little bit just so they don't dominate. Um, that's pretty good. We're going to do one more. We're going to add a new one, and that is we're just going to add a little bit in here. Right now, it's making it all look dark. Don't worry, it's not going to do that in the end. All we're doing is, is we're painting an area right now, and that area we're just going to bring up and brighten just a little bit. There we go. So we're just bringing our image, we're, we're tweaking it bit by bit and taking the areas that we want to add to and um, the other areas that we want to subtract from and we're just giving that a little tweak. Actually, I'm just going to add a little bit more here to the Milky Way, just, just a bit. So I'm going to come in here and just brighten it a little bit. Now, if we really wanted to add some color to it, um, there's people who do that where they just take and they go, oh, I like to add some purples to the Milky Way. Um, we could add color to the Milky Way. That's what that would look like. Uh, I'm not fond of the whole adding a whole ton of color, though, especially not that color range. So we're just going to bring that back to a white. Um, so now we've just taken we've uh, with every single pin. So this one here was the first one and we just made the whole sky kind of that bluish tone um, then we brightened up the Milky Way we brightened it up a bit more um, this one here we darkened down we brightened up some areas and uh, this one here we took all this area here and warmed up the tones so all we're doing is taking a raw image that was flat and wasn't really what we were looking for and within a couple of minutes we've just taken that and made it what we want it to be so that's what we do in post-production. So there we go. We've just gone from um, prepping for a session to photographing it and then to post-production. Hopefully this was of use to you and uh, you'll come and watch my stuff again. Um, if this was beneficial or you liked it or you just thought, what a handsome devil, um, please hit the like button and uh, subscribe. Uh, you'll get many of the other tutorial videos that I'll be putting out um, on photography 
um, portrait photography, landscape photography, um, still life, stuff like that. So please hit like, hit subscribe, and if this is beneficial, feel free to share it. Thanks. Um, have a great day. We'll see you next time.